This was brought to me by Luke, the, the guy holding the camera. And uh, it's kind of a Frankenplane. It's got a few things to it. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to show what are the normal things you're going to see when you need to take an old beast and actually turn it into something that will work. Let's take a look. So most everything is here, but you can see the lever cap here isn't quite wide enough. That's the wrong one. It's for like a four or a five. Same thing with the iron. It's not quite wide enough. It's one for about a four or a five chip breaker as well. But other than that, we got a broken tote. And other than that, pretty much everything's there. We've got the screw here. We've got the yoke. We've got everything in place. The only thing we're really missing is the lateral adjuster, but you can work without that. So it doesn't have too much rust. A little bit of patina, a little bit of surface rust. Not bad. We can make this thing a user. Yeah, you can tell by these nuts. It's an earlier one. Mm, do I want to force that? There we go, nice. That is everything. I want to fix that because that, that's actually rather useful to a good plane. So it's about that wide. Let's grab a little scrap. Is that enough? Don't need quite that much, but doing that. It's amazing how good you can get them with just a bench brush. I know a lot of people are going to ask, how old is this actually? And one of the easiest ways to find out is to come to hyperkitten.com. I'll leave a link to it down below. And here we can come down to plane type study. It just takes you through it step by step. Dating flowchart, and we can see where we're at. Date your bench plane. Number one, how many patent dates are cast into the bed behind the frog? And here we have one, two, three. So I can click on this. We know it's a type 11 or 12. Is the depth adjusting nut large? No, it is a small one. So we are at type 11. That was quick and easy. Three dates, small adjusting knob. This was made between 1910 and 1918. Gojo, one of my favorite soaps. It's got a little bit of a grit and it can get in there and really do a decent amount of cleaning pretty quickly. I love how a little bit of soap really just brings it out. It doesn't take much at all to really clean one of these. Let's see what the before. Every good plane has paint spatter. Because of course it was left in a garage where someone opened a paint can. Come back in with a dry towel. Give it a little bit of a polish. Wood by right paste wax. I'll just 
just polish it up. Bring out that aged patina. Still a hair of rust in there. I'm not going to get that out without hurting the patina, and so I'm going to leave it alone, and it's perfectly fine. So I need to talk to what I'm going to do and what I'm not going to do. And this is the frog, and this style has a flat bedding surface that mates with a flat bedding surface. And these little flat surfaces up here don't actually mate with that, they just kind of sit on it. Um, so they don't have to be perfect. Also, the bed of the frog, you can see, has some japanning here where it was never fully cleaned off, but it's relatively flat here. I'm not going to hit the bed of the frog. It doesn't have to be perfectly flat. The iron that's going to go on there isn't perfectly flat, and they don't have to be. So we're not going to really mess with this. Um, just making sure that you get a good solid connection, well, that's the job of the chip breaker and the lever cap, so we don't need to really clean this up. Also, with the lateral adjuster, um, I don't really like messing with it because it's like a 50-50 chance you're going to end up breaking this. And actually getting another one on there, it's an absolute pain. Um, so generally, I prefer to get a whole new frog, but in this case, we're not going to get a whole new frog. We're just working with what we have. Um, so I'm just going to be doing lateral adjustments on this with an old mallet, so we don't have to worry about that. The lateral adjuster is a nice thing, but it's not terribly necessary. So as to the old iron and chip breaker, uh, this is a similar timeline, but it is a much narrower iron and really isn't going to be great for it. The chip breaker, as the same, is mated for this iron. Um, however, it's smaller and uh, it's not going to work quite as well because the rectangular hole is in the wrong placement. So I have this one that I have just lying around. It's the right width. Uh, it's a newer one, but the chip breaker is wrong. And so my chip breaker is going to have to be up a little bit farther, but it'll work. Um, it's one of these things that I'm going to work with what I have around the shop. I could actually go out and buy a new chip breaker, uh, but in this case, this will do. So we're going to stick with what we got here. I'm not looking for polishing. I'm just wanting to clean them a little bit. they got all sorts of gunk on them, and I don't like gunk. So that's not quite, not quite polished up yet, so we're going to fix that. It's amazing what a little bit on a strop can do to make that top look pretty. Getting there. I'd like to actually clean some of the threads with wax. Wax on, wax off. So the lever cap is also the wrong size for this one. You can see it's a good bit more narrow. Um, it will still work. It won't work as great. And if I had another one in stock, I might throw that in there, but I don't. So until then, that. If I really wanted this plane to be amazing, I'd get a new lever cap and a new frog, but uh, it will still work. And we're just trying to get it uh, okay and functional. We want it to be a user. Add a little bit of wax, polish it out. I like it. I like it a lot. Start by putting things back together again. Ta-da! It should be there. So we can put together this true Frankenplane. So we're running into the front of the mouth, which is normal when you upgrade to a thicker iron. And this one is, is rather thick. Um, but I have two options. Number one, I can wallow out the screws so this can slide back a little farther. But it's already back so far that the bevel is running into the front of the, uh, the back of the mouth. So I'm actually going to file this mouth out just a little bit. Okay, so um, 
doesn't quite, quite fit, does it? Hmm. Let's work on that. Like that. Ooh la la! Wax it in. Leave it back down. There it goes. Glass. 50 grit sandpaper. So you can see this is three strokes and I'm touching here at the nose, touching at the mouth, touching here, touching right back here. I want to touch right over here. Other than that, it's flat. That's all it needs. I'm gonna get rid of some more of that rust and uh, do a few more strokes. So I've got gorgeous flat from here to here across the mouth, up this side and on the nose. And I've got a couple touching spots back here. I would love to have something right there, so I'm going to go a little bit farther. Touching right here. This whole area is perfect. All the way around here, that's done. Just kind of polish the whole thing in. A little bit of oil. Put that in. Put that in. Let's make this Franken plane sing. Lateral adjustment. Touching here. Touching there. Very happy shavings. That plane's got another hundred years on its life.
So there you have it. This was a fun one to restore. Now, there are hundreds of different ways of restoring. Uh, this one is we're just doing the basic amount to get it up and running, make it a little pretty, um, and doing it with what we have on hand rather than actually going out and buying things and replacing the frog and replacing the lever cap and getting a different chip breaker. We're, we're using the things we have on hand to make it functional. And there are thousands of different ways of restoring a hand plane. If you'd like to see specifics about this one and why we did what we did and what we're thinking, um, go over to the second channel. I have a whole second channel called Wood by Right How To. And on that channel, I actually talk through all the builds on this channel. And we, uh, we, we think through what are we doing, why are we doing it, and actually do a lot of the teaching. That channel is all about the education. This channel is all about the easy watching, the ASMR, and that type of thing. Um, so if you like that, hop on over there. On a video like this, I know there's going to be lots of questions or comments or things where people think I should do something better. Let me know those down below. I do read through all of them and I answer as many of them as I possibly can. So thank you for that. Uh, putting a comment down below helps out the channel as well as the like, share, subscribe. Thank you. Uh, there is the almighty algorithm here on YouTube and uh, with those things you help this channel grow. So thank you. It's a great way to um, show your appreciation for it. If you'd like to take it one step farther, you may notice that there are a bunch of names over here. Those are all of the fantastic, wonderful, and benevolent people over on Patreon. Without patrons on this channel or people who have clicked that little join button and become a member here on YouTube, YouTube, we wouldn't exist. We are completely sponsored by members, by patrons. So thank you. That means more than I can say. And honestly, without you guys, the lights wouldn't be on and this channel wouldn't be here. So if you want to find out more about that, go on over to uh, patreon.com backslash woodbyright. Click the link down in the description or click the little join button and all those things you know about. I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. The thing I love about restoring hand planes and antique tools is it doesn't matter how you do it you did it wrong because someone out there is going to say, oh, you should have done this instead of that. But I can tell you, beyond a shadow of a doubt, on this channel, we did it right. Just spelled wrong.